What's going on everybody? This is Urzio99 and today I'm going to cover a bit of the materials that are required for most aspects of industry. Yeah, the first episode we covered the skills that are required and for the various things you can do and there are a lot of them. In this episode we will cover the blueprints and the materials that are required. So first we'll cover the blueprints. Now I have my blueprints sorted. As you can see I have a separate hanger for my originals and my copies because I have like 2,000 something copies and you can only have a thousand stacks in the corp hanger unless they're subdivided into cans. Now I segregate everything. This is more of a throwback to the old uh, to the old system before we got the new Cryas industry window, but I like to keep my things organized. I'm a neat freak. Okay, you see the first line here. We have uh, my list, my uh, blue POs for ammo and charges. As you can see this covers scripts for different modules. I've got a targeting range script for a sensor booster here. We have a Tracking speed disruption script for a tracking disruptor. Of course, we have uh, interdiction probes, projectile ammo, missiles. I also have the mining crystal BPOs, fiber charges, fuel blocks, energy, weapon charges, and Looks like three of the four bombs. I'm missing the, let's see, explosive, thermal, kinetic. So I'm missing the EM, the EM bomb I don't have for some reason. Now, ammunition and charges are very cheap BPOs. Well, except for the bombs, they tend to be pretty pricey. But uh, ammunitions are a nice way to get started. You just have to find out what ammunition is used prevalently in your market hub of choice. One caveat, though, about energy crystals. Um, these frequency crystals for energy weapons. They do not degrade ever. The only time a person has to replace them is if they get blown if their ship gets blown up. I could I could make one radio small blueprint. I could make one run and have a radio blueprint and I could just use that one forever. Until someone blows up my ship or I decide to replace it. So your best your best bets are going to be things like fuel blocks, which can be pricey. Different types of ammunition. Uh, the the mining mining crystals will degrade over time, but not everyone uses mining crystals. Depends on the preference of the individual miner. But uh. If you're Mimitar, uh, things like EMP small, fusion small, base plasma small, they tend to do fairly well. And we have my components. Now these are BPOs for Tech 2 components. Now these are in the Tech 2 RAMs that you'll need. These are only useful if you're doing Tech 2 building. And the blueprints are about five mil a piece, but like I said, they're only really useful if you're building Tech Two. And of course, you have modules. As you can see here, there's uh, some that I haven't researched yet, just because I never got around to it. In fact, I've never researched this one either. Now, one of the reasons. I haven't researched it is you have to bring in additional materials. 
to research certain special items like the collecting device. Most you can just throw in and research this. Okay. And it'll work. Now, most people won't build Tech 1 because the meta level modules that are out there because you can get those off rats, you can get them pretty cheap and they're a little more effective typically than the meta zeros so I don't I don't build meta zeros unless I'm building a tech 2 item to upgrade so like I build a strip except for maybe like a strip miner one those probably have a decent market we have rigs Rigs are good because they, they're they built with salvage from ship's wrecks. And those should not be there, but they are. I made some copies. I'm going to invent some, uh, some shield rig, Tech 2 shield rigs. And, uh, we're in the wrong, in the wrong hole. Uh, these blueprints are pretty cheap as long as you get them off NPC orders, and the parts are usually not too expensive. Just take a little time to research, find a good, uh, find what gives you a good margin, and then we have my limited collection of ships. You can see I've got a couple cruisers, a lot of frigates, and not much else. I'm just getting started with my BPO collection for ships, and these can get real expensive in a hurry. So, like a, a battleship BPO can cost a billion esque. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about getting a BPO. Now you can get if you're just starting out. You want to you know, go a little easier. You can go into the contract system and you can search for a blueprint copy. Let's say I want to make, say, antimatter small. Well, that's sad. No antimatter. That makes me sad. You can also search the just for blueprint copies. We will confine it to the current region, which would be the forge. Here we go. Then you can sit back and analyze the various blueprints. A lot of ships. Now, when you open up a contract you can see here this guy wants a hundred thousand isk for a, a warrior one blueprint max runs 1500 runs but no research that is awful you can't research a copy so you want your you want to get your uh, copies that are researched Hmm, let's try a thrasher. Now, here you go. This is a max efficiency thrasher. ME10 TE20. So, you would need to add up your 
149,000 plus this. So we go in and view an industry. Now keep in mind this is, this facility quote is 4G to 4.4 so it's going to be bad. Hold the mouse over it. Total estimated price 964000 plus 150, so we're over one, we're about 1.1 1 .1 mil. Plus the job cost, as you can see, it's maxed out at uh, NG to 4.4. For something that's only 1,053,000 is estimated, so that's not a good buy. It's kind of the spitball map you have to do when you're dealing with contracts. Now some items can only be found through the blueprints copies like this uh, large ancillary armor repair. Let's pop this open. 10 runs, 0 ME, 0 TE, but that's to be expected. It's a drop item. Looking for the BPO for some strange reason. Sixty four thousand is that's it. Yeah, and sixty eight thousand. <laughs> and 130,000 is to make it. Yeah, not a good buy. In fact, that's kind of a god awful buy. You'd be losing, you'd only be getting paid half the money you put into the, to uh, build it. So, yeah, that's the contract system. You're usually better off to build your own blueprints just because you don't have to deal with someone else's markup and it helps your margins considerably. I'll go ahead and illustrate. I've got to make some... I have to make some kestrels for my... As you can see here, I've got this shows a lot more than what I have, but a lot of these are blueprint copies. Designate originals here. Let's see, I've got all my blueprints fairly well researched, except for time efficiency. The, the ships, they take quite a bit of effort to, uh, to research. The small, the first few levels aren't bad, but when you start getting into the tier nine and tier ten, it can take almost a month to research. Now I need to make 24 kestrels because I'm going to be making 24 manticores, which is the Tech Two version of this ship. Now I've got the materials, of course. Total estimated price 10.5 million. They sell for 12.1 million, so I could make a little profit if I wanted to sell these outright. But I stand to make more profit selling the self bombers. We'll go ahead, and start on that. See, there's 21 hours 45 minutes. As you can see, I'm researching. Uh, these two rigs I'm researching all the way to 10. You can see it takes 28. It's actually just shy of 30 days from when I started this job to get it done. Let's see, 524, 22, Yep, just shy of 30 days. So, that's that. As far as the materials that are required, 
Now my, as you can see, my uh, materials hanger is a bit of a mess. And I have some Tech 2 components for the various Tech 2 things I'm building. See them all here. I have some miscellaneous MPC junk like electronic parts. Uh, the RAM. See, I have tons of RAM. Then I have moon composites. Oodles and oodles of moon composites. Then we have standard minerals. The ones I've highlighted here will be the ones you use the most often. Of course, Tritanium, Pyrite, Mexilon, Isogen, Noxium, Zydrine, Megasite. If you're sticking to Tech 1 building, this is what you'll be using primarily. Morphite is also an asteroid mineral, but it's only used in Tech 2 production. And it's pretty pricey, so I would if you don't need it, I wouldn't buy it. Then you have, of course, salvage. You get these by using a salvager on wrecks in missions or anomalies or other player's ships. Some of these items are very, very valuable. Uh, one example would be these armor plates. You can just mouse over and see like the logic circuits. You see there are 622,000. If they're all blue like this, it indicates that they're Tech 2 salvage. They tend to be more valuable because they're used to make Tech 2 rigs. Some of them aren't very valuable individually, but you get them in fairly good numbers. But they're all a little, they're all fairly valuable. Then I have a meta, some meta modules. Uh, these are actually leftovers from a project I did making magnetic field stabilizer tubes. Then I have a PI products. They're typically used in Tech 2 conventions. And then I have Tech 1 ships. As you can see here I have nine Vexers. These will eventually become Ishtars. And a Magnate, which when I get the rest of the supplies together, will become an Anathema Covert Ops ships. Ahead and illustrate a Tech 2 blueprint here. Since I'm making mana cores, I'll go ahead and show that. <coughs> move the input hanger to the materials hanger. Move the output. Production bin, which is where I put all the finished goods. As you can see, I've got a fair number of the stuff already built. I'm just waiting on the rest of it to come through. I need capacitors, mag pulse thrusters, sensor clusters, armor plates, processors, shield emitters, reactors. All Tech 2 ships require these things in various flavors and to varying degrees depending on what you're building. They typically also require construction blocks. It requires more fight. These little RAM Starship Tech Dealies. And the Tech 1 version of the ship you're upgrading. In this case the Kestrel. Now this blueprint has an 8 material efficiency and a 10 time efficiency. So it's a pretty baller blueprint. And it has up to four runs on it. And I have six of these. So when the smoke clears and I get everything built, 
I'll be able to manufacture 24 stealth bombers. I'll haul them up to Jita and put them on the market. As you can see here, the total costs 73.6 million for four of them. And I can make 86.5 million for the four of them. So about 10 million is profit. Now this character cannot build them because it doesn't have the Starship Engineering trained. So I'll have to use one of my other characters. I have 15 in this corp, so that won't be a problem. That's the basics of Tech 2 production. In order to do a research job, it's pretty straightforward. Find the blueprint you want to research. You can see this one's ME9. To put the last point of research on this blueprint, 23 days, 8 hours, 14 minutes. And that's with metallurgy at a 4. I compare that and we add time efficiency. Let's put the nine points of time efficiency on it. Fifteen days to get up to nine. But it would add it, 22 days to get it a uh, higher and it won't let me do it because the job duration is longer than 30 days you can't have multiple runs that take more than 30 days a one run item can take as long as it needs but you can't have multiple runs and expect it and go more than 30 days the station will not allow it so I'm gonna save this uh, Probably going to research one of my rigs instead. There we go. Medium cargo hold optimization. Key for industrial ships everywhere. See, it takes 20 days. I've started the job. And we just have to sit and wait. Now, the index, as you can see, the index for the uh, Research is much higher than the production index. The production index was only like 2%, but the research is higher because there are fewer research stations in Empire Space. All these uh, single dots, these are all stations with manufacturing, and then the research facilities are the other ones. You can see there's not many some of them are pretty ridiculous here seven percent see four percent we're we're in a little quieter system for some things but some of these stations can get jammed pretty easily and there's a lot fewer research systems, so there's more, uh, there's fewer stations sh sharing the load as opposed to the, as opposed to the manufacturing index, which is spread among a lot, all, syst all of the other stations. So, 
that is that in a nutshell. And next time we'll maybe we'll uh, put on some Tech 2 and you can see just how time consuming and aggravating that can be at times. But I'm Ergio 99 and I'll see you next time.